Hey, this is Blake from the Gig Harbor Fly Shop, and today I'm sitting down with Sean Larson. He recently did a video for us on tying uh, his flat wing, and uh, it's a really effective pattern, and you can really change it up in all sorts of different ways, and so I thought we would just sit down, try something new, just have a conversation about um, his flat wing and, and just kind of geek out over some different tying stuff. Um, I learned how to tie flat wings uh, several years ago from uh, a guy in our area named Jack Devlin, and he would tie them up for stripers, and uh, and then kind of um, they mo his flies morphed for sea run cutthroat trout and coho and stuff like that. Um, and so there's some similarities with Sean's uh, fly, but some differences as well. And so I'm really excited to talk about it today. And so um, hi. Hey. How's it going? We got uh, we have some beer from Georgetown Brewery, so yeah. um, they support wild fish and right awesome stuff. So we got the Bodizafa IPA, and um, I think starting off, let's talk about foundational stuff. <coughs> let's start with hooks. Um, and so you've been tying on some A-Rex, but there's also some other hooks that you've been um, been tying on. And so tell us about like so, some of the different hooks you use, uh, especially if you scale the uh, the fly at all and, and do a larger fly for mm -hmm. say like salmon or if you're gonna do it for um, different species, whatever. Um, what are some other some other hooks that are great? Some other hooks I've been using have been the Gamagatsu SL12S one at short. Um, it's a heavy wire hook. It's got a real short shank, which allows most of the materials to swim freely in the water, which I'm a fan of the short shank flies. The other ones I've used have been the TMCO 800S. Yeah, it's um, a good one. It's a pretty good one. Uh, it's pretty durable. It's real sharp. Um, they're not cheap. They're not cheap, <laughs> no. Um, if you want a cheaper hook that's pretty good, I use the Daiichi 2546. Um, okay. It has an offset on the hook. It's, I think the Oshasni yeah. Ben helps keel the fly in the water. Okay. Um, but lately I've been using the short shank Okay, ones. so, so Something you just mentioned, so keeling the fly. So, um, so let's talk about that. So, the, there, there's you have to have a, f a hook that's heavy enough yes. um, to help keep that fly riding straight. Yeah, if you use one of the like tin plated hooks, you know, a real lightweight hook, the fly will ride sideways on the retrieve, which isn't really what you want it to do. You want it to ride upright so it swims. Um, you know, kind of side to side or up and down with the current. Um. Okay, so for example, uh, a, a fly that would be that the the, the shape of it is great, <coughs> the SC15 from Gamagatsu, yeah. but it's so light wire that it's not going to keel the fly like some of these uh, other these heavier yeah, hooks you, are. You would definitely have to try and find a way to add some weight to it to make it. Uh, keel right or you could just buy a hook that's a little bit heavier and it does it for you. Uh, now in the video you did, um, it was the minnow hook from A-Rex. Yes. And um, I just just started trying tying on some of those um, and I really like it. I think it's, so we have three samples here and we're going to just kind of to help us think through uh, the fly and, and uh, talk about the different materials. Um, are, did you tie all three of these on the... These are all the SA280 minnow hooks from A-Rex yep, on okay. size four. Kay. I use the same size fly whether I fish for coho or yeah. sea run cutthroat. Um, most of the time I'm fishing for sea run cutthroat. Sometimes I'll hook coho as well. So I just kind of right. use a I've been little there. bit bigger hook. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been there. I've witnessed it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so <coughs> question I have... Um, like the, one of the very first steps you have in here is that you tie in bucktail into um, into the fly. So, um, what what purpose does that serve? And have you before for that belly material that you then uh, layer in that's synthetic? Have you done these with just all bucktail, or let, let's talk about the bucktail material? Um, I like bucktail because it has a natural taper. So you just kind of cut it, lay it on there, and it looks good. In the past, I've tried to use materials like. Um, Ferrars SF blend and kind of I'll kind of pull a little taper into yeah. it and then lay it on the hook or I'll use the ripple ice fiber and the bucktail white um, just you got to do a little bit of work to make it look good first right. uh, or you can just get the bucktail cut it put it on there so I kind of went back to the bucktail okay. I started with it then I went to synthetics and then I went back to the bucktail just out of ease of tying just I like to be able to just cut it and put it right on there and it looks good 
And the bucktail is nice that it has a taper that a lot of yeah. synthetic materials um, don't have. Have you tried the, um, from Flyman, have you tried that synthetic bucktail that has that looks like I, it has a taper? I did, but it was, the thing I like about bucktail is when you give it some hard thread wraps, it just really cinches it down and it, it gets nice and tight on the hook. It doesn't have a big hump. Yeah. So when I tried the synthetic, it just kind of left a big hump on the hook and I just wasn't really liking that. It made it harder to keep the fly smaller. Okay. Uh, you know, I know a lot of us that um, that tie flies um, that are longer flies, we, we get, you know, concerned from, from <coughs> experience of uh, material wrapping. So um, you know, let's talk through <coughs> just the fly design. Uh, why doesn't this fly foul as much as other flies do? Is it um, is it because of the bucktail that you're putting in there or is it because of the what you do with the feathers? Because I noticed in the video you put a little bit of UV that coats the feather back. And so talk about how the materials kind of play together and, and prevent, um, prevent the thing from just fouling all the time. Yeah, I think the combination of bucktail and then putting the feathers on and then finishing the fly off with the EP fibers or bucktail on the top and bottom, that kind of, I add a few different uh, layers of that and then I trim it and I think that keeps the fly kind of right in true to how it, it's right here in the water to where it won't wrap around the hook or foul. It kind of keeps those feathers um, laying backwards on the on the hook. Um, okay. So it's just kind of, I just experimented with different materials and I noticed like, oh, this way kind of fouled sure. or this way didn't. So I think kind of just tying it bulky but then trimming it short kind of helps the fly keep its shape to where it won't foul as easily. Yeah, let's keep talking about material. So you're talking about uh, the ripple ice fiber a lot. You love that stuff, but you've also experimented with other um, different um, flash materials. Yeah. What are some other flash materials that you've used, uh, stuff that you like, stuff that, that didn't work out that you didn't like? Um, some other stuff I've used that I really like is the Predator Wrap from okay. uh, Hairline. This one, this one has Predator Wrap This one has Predator okay. Wrap in it. I also like the uh, Senyo's Laser Hair. That's to okay. me, kind of reminds me of like a angel hair which those are good for kind of accent flash. Like you need a supporting material underneath that. Otherwise in the current, it just lays right down and then your fly gets real skinny and hard to see. So put in something like Ferrars blend or some bucktail or um, another material I really like is the sculpting flash fiber. It's kind of like an EP fiber. That's this material that's on the bottom here. Yeah, you okay. can lay that on there real, real thick and then cut it to whatever shape you yeah. want with your scissors and it'll hold that shape in the water too. So I really like that material yeah. for tarpon flies. Oh yeah. Uh, for crab flies for permit. Like yeah. it's a, I mean it definitely is has um uh I mean that shaping ability to yeah. it that that's great. So okay so what about the fish skull? So um the, the fish skull is the mask that goes over the top that makes um makes it really easy where you don't have to do any epoxy work. Uh, on the fly and you don't have to worry about sitting there and spinning the thing yeah. um, or having a, f a flywheel to dry it. Uh, but there's there's pros and cons to um, to the masks. Um, so talk, talk us through some of those. Some of the pros would be it's a very quick way to finish a fly off. You just put a little dab of UV resin in there or uh, super glue is what I use most of the time. If I don't have super glue, the UV resin works pretty good. Um, so it makes the, the finished head of the fly look the same every single time, which is nice when you're trying to tie like a dozen at a time. You know, you want them all to look the same, kind of be all uniform. So it's great for if you're a commercial tire or if you're just, you know, want to tie flies that kind of all resemble each other. So you have a, some backups. Things I kind of don't like is if it hits a rock, it just breaks. Okay. Um, if it, it kind of makes a little bit of a splash in the water when you're fishing out there sometimes, uh, I think it matters and sometimes I don't think it matters. Okay, what about how, how do the fly swims? Does so it affect it changes, the, the sink of the fly at all? Or I, I, I noticed that it changes the way the fly swims. It kind of has a more jig action. Okay, so there's the, a little bit of weight added yeah, to it. Yeah, there's a little bit of weight, but when you stop stripping, it'll just kind of hover like that. Kind of look yeah. like a wounded bait fish, so that would be a pro. Okay. And other, um, but if you don't use that, your fly swims more freely in yeah. the water, kind of more side to side, more freely. The fish mass makes it swim more like up and down. It's a little bit harder to get that side to side 
action that you would get with the flat wing. Well, I think that's one of the um, one of the great things about flat wings is is um, I mean when you fish them on a floating line, you stop on that pause. That uh, those feathers that just lay on top of each other, they 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 just get a lot of movement in the water, um, and and that. That's, I mean, a lot of times yeah. fish hammer it when you oh, yeah. stop and because it just keeps moving. It has that mm -hmm. wiggle to it. Um, and so I could see how that could affect how um, that natural movement uh, would have. So um, when I learned how to tie flat wings, uh, we would strip the fluff off of the bottom of the feather and use that to create a pillow that you lay the feathers on. Um, but this was like before like UV resins and stuff too. So, um, so uh, I mean, talk me through that. So. Um, the UV resins, why are they valuable? Um, I mean, in how, I mean, you've used it here in, you know, four or five different applications in, in the fly. So, um, and so for people that don't know, the Loon UV resins, it's a, it's like, a, it's uh, like an epoxy or like almost like a clear, it's clear, it's like an epoxy, but it's, um, it's light activated um, with, um, with the, the UV lights and it cures super fast. I mean, we're talking just, just seconds. And so, um, so people have been using them for finishing off the heads of flies, but um, what we're talking about, if you haven't seen the other videos that uh, Sean has used it to, to build in durability into the fly and, and to hold positioning of materials in the, in the fly as well. Yeah, so when I first started tying, I tried the stripping the fibers off the feather and then kind of creating a cushion. And what I noticed is the it was really easy to get the feather to twist like this. Right. It wouldn't lay flat, and I was like, well, it's called a flat wing. It should lay flat. So I tried to come up with different ways, like using dubbing instead, you know, just lay some dubbing down there and try and have a little cushion that way. But the way that it just seemed to be easier to replicate the process over and over, would be right where the feather meets the hook, adding a little bit of that UV resin. And then I was watching Loon Live, Loon Live one night, and Matt Callie's kind of went back on it, and I was like, so, "Oh, that's so that's genius. where you got that's the where I got that idea." The okay. Yeah. Okay. So then I saw that, and I was like, "I'm gonna give that a try," and I did it, and that feather just stayed perfect every yeah, yeah. time. And I was like, "That's a pretty great idea." Yeah. Um. So. I like using the UV resins because it, it just makes it so much easier to repeat the process yeah. you know, over and over again. Okay, so I'll, I'll throw a plug in here. So we have another video <laughs> that where I sat down with Matt Callies uh, from Loon and he's like, he's the brain behind a lot of just of the stuff that Loon's doing. Um, and we just did, we just talked through tips and tricks and techniques of fly tying and it's a great video. It's been out for several years, check our channel for that. Um, but uh, but it's, it's super helpful. So you use the UV resin, resin to lock the head in place and the eyes. Um, and so if you're not using the head, how do you finish the fly off? What do you do on, on the front end of that? Uh, the gel super glue is another option. To, so, to put the eyes on there? Yeah, you don't want to put a whole lot, just a little bit, because otherwise it dries and it kind of leaves a white crust on there sure. if you do it too much. So I just do a little bit inside the head, slide it on there, and then just like a pin drop in the eyes. Right. And then I'll use the the uh, whip finisher, the kind of the needle portion, and I'll just push that straight down on the eye and kind of hold it there for a few seconds. Or you could just set it in there and then use the UV resin and, and zap it and it, it does yeah. the job just as well. I think when I uh, first started tying flat wings, I um, I never even put eyes on them. I would I would use jungle cock, yeah, um, and I would use you know and it would, you know had a more traditional look to it. Um, but you know like the um, those living eyes um, from flymen. I mean they just they look really, really good. Really it, good. But it's fun to tie traditional stuff too. Yeah. Right? Okay. So what about larger flat wings? So um, I mean if you're gonna if you're gonna scale it, I was actually just thinking the other day. Um, uh, I'm going to Christmas Island here um, in a few months, and I was thinking, man, I should, I should try tying like a, a large flat wing for GTs. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I haven't. I fished some large bait fish patterns, but it's it's just it hasn't had, um, you know, the wi the winging material in there. Um, you know, I don't know if it really matters, but I just thought it'd be fun to fun to try. But so like like so talk to you know so do you add more feathers or or what are there any issues that you have to worry about if when you go up in size? Um, I think getting a hook that kind of matches the size of the fly you're tying definitely helps keep the fly riding the way it should be in the water. But that, I add a little bit more feathers, a little bit more material as the fly gets bigger. So 
these flies for sea run cutthroat, I try and keep them between two and three inches. I think that size of fly is easy to cast on a five or six weight, and it appeals to a larger variety of sea run cutthroat out there. I've definitely caught them on flies that were bigger, but I think you're kind of looking for a specific you know, size range of fish if you're right. doing that. So if I fish for coho, I try and keep it like maybe three to four. Sometimes I'll use the size four, or I might, instead of adding uh, lead or like beads and hiding them inside the fly, sometimes I'll just pump the size of the hook up to a size two to give it a little bit more weight okay. and just use that instead. Of Have you ever tried uh, tying a flat wing for like warm water species, like for bass? Um, I have, just like in your, you know, just chartreuse and white or something, sure. and, and tried that. I just kind of fished the same size of fly we got here, and it, it worked. I uh, haven't tried that too many times, though. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, hey, thanks for sitting down with us today just to talk through uh, this. If you have not seen our video on Sean tying up this flat wing, check it out. Uh, leave some comments down below. Uh, let us know what you think about this fly. What are some uh, tips and tricks that you have on tying flat, flat wings? We'd love to hear from that. We're always uh, wanting to learn, learn more. So we hope this was helpful for you. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you get updates with all the other new videos that we have coming out. And we'll see you out on the water.